It is only logical that those who defy established norms and regulations in a society while denying its populace the right to decent living through corruption be dealt with accordingly with the law. Hello and welcome to The Eagle, Nigeria's premier anti-corruption program. It is a program brought to you by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. My name is Aisha Muhammad. On the program today, EFCC assures the Ugandan Parliament of support in tackling corruption, just as the Commission raises the alarm over a plot to tarnish its acting chairman's image. Also on this episode, we will update you on the ongoings in the trials of Alex Badi, Ulisse Metu, and more. This and more will come your way right after this time out. Right, so my name is Eram Bukhari and I'm representing the government of Pakistan. And today I'm here at the EFCC and I'm extremely encouraged and happy about the work that the EFCC is doing. And I hope that uh, the, the mission of the president where he wants to kill corruption before it kills Nigeria, it is going to be implemented by the EFCC. So good luck to the EFCC. Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, assured of closer collaboration with the Ugandan parliament in its bid to enact better and concise legislations that would aid the East African country tackle the scourge of corruption. Kamali Gebi tells us more. Magu gave the assurance while receiving members of the parliament of Uganda's sectoral committee on legal and parliamentary affairs, who were on a benchmarking visit to the commission's head office, to fashion out ways of strengthening integrity and proper conduct in government. According to the EFCC boss, corruption has long transcended national boundaries and it is imperative for African countries to synergize in combating this scourge. And I also want to appeal to you by your position, please look at other laws. <coughs> look at other laws that are very, very relevant. These are things that you have to do at this time so that you can, you can come into the international fora. Like the the Money Laundering Act, if you don't have Money Laundering Act, okay, you have Money Laundering Act. There are so many other acts. You don't have cases of advancing fraud. Okay, please. There are so many other laws. Now that you have started, please make sure before you leave the parliament, you exhaust other things so that the other people can only come and amend the ones you have. But uh, please, I want you to be the pioneer in initiating most of the international laws so that uh, our Uganda brothers will, will come up. So I'm not saying all the laws we have, uh, you don't have them, but I, I just want to encourage your initiative. And if you have the laws, please examine the laws to see whether there is need for to cause further um, review. It's very, very necessary. Samo Bitangaro, who led the eight-man delegation of parliamentarians, said they were at the EFCC because of the reputation of the agency and to learn from the successes that it had recorded over the years. Bitangaro further said that since the promulgation of the Ugandan constitution in 2005, the country had struggled with issues of probity and accountability in its public service, which necessitated the visit to tap from EFCC's wealth of experience. Since 2005, when we promulgated our constitution, wherein we, we created a leadership court. So we enacted a, a, an act to ensure that there is a code of conduct for public officers, members of parliament, civil servants, uh, people who are employed by government agencies, there's a code of conduct that governs how they should operate. And in the process of operationalizing and enforcement of the Act, we have found some challenges. We registered some successes, some failures as, uh, as expected, and also some challenges. So, we 
had the process of amending our constitution in 2005. And we recommend <coughs> amendments. But one of the things we should do is to establish a tribunal to try cases that have been um, identified for those who have breached the Code of Conduct. Another member of the parliament, Ibrahim Semuju, said the committee had the mandate to amend the Ugandan Code of Conduct Act and establish a tribunal to try offenders of prescribed laws, which is why they needed to understudy the laws establishing the EFCC, EFCC's mode and scope of operations, and most importantly, internalize EFCC's robust anti-corruption agenda. The meeting later went into a question and answer session between the visiting parliamentarians and the management of the EFCC. Corruption is dishonesty and illegal behavior by people in positions of trust. A public office is a public trust. Do not abuse positions of trust for private gains. Stay away from corruption. Nigeria is a great nation and it is our responsibility to make the country greater. If you notice any act of corruption, please report to the EFCC via info at efccnigeria.org or call 09-904-4751 or 904 4752 You can also call 9 904-4753. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, has raised the alarm over deliberate plots to ruin his reputation by forces that are not comfortable with his campaign to rescue the nation from the vice grip of corruption. Again, Kamali Gebi is our guide. The plots are already manifesting in clandestine campaigns of misinformation in the social media intended to impugn the acting chairman's integrity and pit him against interests both within and outside of government. In the last week or so, the social media has been awash with fictitious reports, all painting an uncanny picture of desperation by Magu over his purported non-confirmation as substantive chair of the EFCC and of stricture within the rank and file of the EFCC workforce leading to resignations. One of such reports is the one making the rounds in several gossip blogs with the title How EFCC's Magu and Sahara Reporters Peddle Lies to the Media. The report, which is a parody of this ingenious invention of falsehood, is the handiwork of mischief makers, hell-bent on causing disaffection between the Magu-led EFCC and the executive on the one hand and members of staff of the EFCC on the other. The EFCC wishes to put it on record that Mr. Magu does not bully anyone and has not embarked on any mission aimed at blackmailing some highly placed personalities in the country, such as Amias, President Muhammadu Buhari's appointees, or any other individual lowly or highly placed in the society. The allusion to bullying and victimization of EFCC staff is clearly designed to instigate the staff of the commission against its leadership, as there is no truth in it. For the records, no senior EFCC core staff has resigned from the commission. An insinuation of mass resignation at the commission is mere scaremongering. The same applies to the claim that a sensitive unit has been set up in the commission to bug phone lines of some persons. This is mischief taken too far. Mr. Magu, who is humbled by the rare privilege to serve the country, says he has no axe to grind with any interest. I came to this job with an open mind to do my best for my country. My actions are dictated by my professional instincts and the love for my country. It is not personal and I have no issues with anybody, Magu said. Corruption is dishonesty and illegal behavior by people in positions of trust. A public office is a public trust. Do not abuse positions of trust for private gains. Stay away from corruption. Nigeria is a great nation and it is our responsibility to make the country greater. If you notice any act of corruption, please report to the EFCC via info at efccnigeria.org or call 09-904-4751 or 09-904-4752.
0909-904-4752. You can also call 0909-904-4753. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Now on to court matters. The trial of a former Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal Alex Badi, and Iyalikam Nigeria Limited continued before Justice Okon Agbang of the Federal High Court sitting in Maitama, Abuja, with the EFCC presenting its eighth witness, Esso Faleke, for cross-examination. Sylvia Mbamalu is our guide. Faleke, a banker with Guarantee Trust Bank, an account officer to Badi's company account, Iyalikam Nigeria Limited had in her evidence narrated how Badi became a co-signatory of the company account in January 2015 and how he gave instructions to carry several transactions running into millions on the account. The witness who was cross-examined by Akin Olujimi and Samuel O. Zibiri, SAN, representing Badi and Iyalikim Nigeria Limited respectively, insisted that she received several instructions from Badi through telephone and written instructions to transfer funds to several accounts, especially Naira and Dollar accounts. The witness, while commenting on Exhibit E25 and E30, explained that though Exhibit E30 carried a loan signature, it contained instructions as to telephone instructions because the telephone number was on the mandate card of the authorized signatory. According to her, the mandate card was not for instruction as how to receive telephone calls. She admitted that she acted according to the standard procedure of the bank with respect to documentary transaction. Speaking on Exhibits E3 to E7, the Statements of Account, Faleke told the court that payments can be made via deposit slip, adding that the payments therein were made in cash deposit via deposit slip but that she did not come to court with them, having not been requested to do so. Justice Okun Abang thereafter adjourned to November 14, 2016 for continuation of trial. Bade is being prosecuted by the EFCC alongside his company, Iyalikam Nigeria Limited, for allegedly abusing its office by using the dollar equivalent of the sum of 1.4 billion naira removed from the accounts of the Nigerian Air Force, NEF, to purchase properties in choice areas of Abuja between January and December 2013. The offence contravenes Section 15, Subsection 2D of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2011 as amended and punishable under Section 15, Subsection 3 of the same Act. In a related development, a defense witness, Richard Ihedioha, in the ongoing trial of the former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Olisa Metu, on Thursday, October 3, 2016, told Justice Okon Abang of the Federal High Court sitting in Meitama, Abuja, that Metu got 400 million naira through his company's corporate account, Destra Investment Limited, to run advocacy campaign for former President Goodluck Jonathan. Ihedioha, who continued his testimony as fifth defense witness, narrated how Metu received the sum of 400 million naira from the former president to calm the tension that was in the country at that time. At that time, there was tension in the six geopolitical zones of the country. In the South-South, there was agitation for resource control and militancy issues. In the Southeast, there were issues of kidnapping and a section of the citizenry were also agitating for self-determination. In the Southwest, there was the issue of demand for the implementation of the reports from the National Conference. Some leaders in the Southwest were also agitating for self-determination for the region. There was problem of insurgency in the Northeast and issues of religious clashes in some other parts of the North. On the whole, the stability of the nation was at stake. There were also perceptions in some sections of the country that the problem of the country was as a result of what the government did or did not do at that time, Ihedio has stated. He went further to explain how his team, led by Yomi Badejo, 
preferred solutions to the problems raised in the meeting with former President Jonathan and how they were eventually given the opportunity to do the project advocacy campaign. He reiterated that what was paramount to the government at that time was the stability and unity of the country. The President, Jonathan, then requested that the first defendant, Metu, should give him his corporate account so that they could send the money at the end of the meeting. The first defendant didn't want to fail the president and the country. Work began in earnest as we met every morning to review our timelines while waiting for funding from the president. I recall a day I was with him, Metu, in his private office and he received the call from the president, Jonathan. After the call, Metu called his PA, DK Sam Ben Musu, who handles his banking transactions and other private stuff, to call Diamond Bank to confirm if he had a cash inflow of 400 million. He even told his PA to put the call on speaker. A lady's voice confirmed the receipt of 400 million naira, and the PA thanked her. The work that was done had so many security components, which ordinarily, at that time, was not in the public domain. The former president's directive was mainly advocacy and assurances to the public that the military was on top of the situation in the country, Ihedioha stated. He confirmed to the court that the payment for the project, recruitment and training, was made to Chief Tony Aneni. Intervention carried out across the country was monitored in order to carry it out effectively. Zonal coordinators were recruited. They were trained at Ibeto hotels, said the witness. The case has been adjourned to November 15 and 16, 2016 for further hearing. Sylvia Mbamalu reporting for The Eagle. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve this if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Still on court matters. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arraigned one Onua Toin Jinaidu, a former banker with Fourth City Monument Bank, FCMB, before Justice Sylvanus Oji of the FCT High Court sitting in Apo Abuja on a 20-count charge bordering on theft and forgery to the tune of 52 million naira. Kamali Gebi again is our guide. As account officer to Dr. D.K. Okoye in the Wusetu branch of the bank, the accused allegedly transferred 52 million naira from Okoye's account without his knowledge or consent into accounts in Zenith Bank, GT Bank, and Union Bank. These transfers were alleged to have been done through forged transfer instructions. Jinadu was first arraigned before Justice Adebukola Banjoko of the FCT High Court on July 12, 2012, but the case had dragged following several frivolous applications and interlocutory appeals up to the Supreme Court, including a petition alleging bias against the presiding judge, a situation that led to the withdrawal of the trial judge. One of the counts reads that you, Oluwato in Jinadu, on or about the 25th day of February 2010, in Abuja within the jurisdiction of this honorable court, while working as a staff of First City Monument Bank, stole the sum of 20,485,961 naira 13 kobo, belonging to one Josephat Okoye, and thereby committed an offence punishable under Section 287 of the Penal Code Act. The defendant pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to her. In view of her plea, counsel to EFCC, Samuel Wegbulam urged the court to fix a date for trial. However, counsel to the defense, M.A. Awu, through an oral application, urged the court to grant the accused bail, relying on Section 162 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and Section 36.5 of the Nigerian Constitution. According to him, the accused is presumed innocent until proven guilty. 
We urge your lordship to allow the defendant to continue on the existing bill granted her by your learned brother, or in the alternative, grant her bill on such terms the court may consider appropriate to enable her attend trial. Responding, Onwegbulam opposed the application, stating that, since the former presiding judge has declined jurisdiction on the matter, the bail has automatically lapsed. Also, my lord, punishment for the offence the defendant is being charged is enough incentive for her to jump bail. Justice Oji, however, granted the accused bail in the sum of 8 million naira with two shorties in like sum. The shorties must be residents in Abuja. One of the shorties must be a civil servant in the federal public service, not below grade level 12. The case has been adjourned to December 5th, 2016 and January 17th and 18th, 2017 for continuation of trial. Welcome back. Now we take our feedbacks. Our first feedback is from our Twitter platform and the sender is Olamide Olamide who said, when will all these politicians be convicted and jailed? Thank you, Olamide. The EFCC investigates and prosecutes. The outcome of the case resides with the judiciary. We can only support the case by providing all necessary evidence gathered during our investigation. So our job is actually partially done, notwithstanding the outcome of the case, even though our joy and credit is when the case is concluded. Next, we have Raymond Machiavelli, who wrote via Facebook saying, The EFCC has made Nigeria a positive role model for African countries. Chairman Magu and the entire staff of EFCC, God bless you all. Please don't be distracted. Continue with your good work. Thanks. Thank you, Raymond, for the commendation and amen to the prayers. Please join the EFCC in the anti-corruption crusade. And our last message on this episode is from Usain Uba, who says, I'm grateful to EFCC for your good and patriotic job. May Allah protect and guide you. What I hate the most is corruption. I'm always happy when I read or hear ruthless people caught and prosecuted. Thank you, Usaini. We really appreciate your comment. We would like to appeal to you and all many Nigerians to join in the EFCC anti-corruption crusade as the job can't be done by the commission alone. All hands must be on deck. We all have to be in this together for a better Nigeria. And that's all we have for you on this week's edition of The Eagle. To leave a comment, please send your contributions to The Eagle at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at Official EFCC or Official EFCC NG at gmail.com. You can also like our page on facebook.com forward slash Official EFCC or follow us on Twitter at Official EFCC. And to watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Muhammad. Thank you for watching and let's do this again, same time, same station next week. Until then, goodbye and God bless Nigeria.